let's do one more example of trying to graph a polynomial function. Our strategy begins with looking at its end behavior. This function right now is not written in polynomial function form, it's written in factored form. But still, if we factored it out, or we can just observe that to, and find the end behavior, we just need to know what the leading coefficient is, or, or the term with the leading coefficient. And that's my first term times my first term times my first term. So I'm gonna get a negative two, x squared times another x. So my leading coefficient is a negative two x cubed. So what does that tell me? It tells me my end behavior. Uh, it tells me that it's negative. So it starts in a decreasing fashion and it ends in a decreasing fashion. I don't know exactly where those will go yet, but those are kind of the parts of the graph I know. I guess it goes both ways too. Um, so it's odd. So it tells me it goes from left to right. It decreases and it's negative. Well, because it's negative, it decreases left to right. Um, because it's odd, it tells me that my end behaviors don't match. Uh, one is high, one is low. All right. Step two, look for its x-intercepts. To do that, we're looking for where this graph equals zero or where f of x equals zero. That's true when x minus one squared equals zero or x plus two equals zero. Now notice this is top one, x minus one squared. There's really two sets there. This is x minus one and another x minus one, which tells me then in this first factor term, if x were a one, and the second one, if x were a one. Again, another way to see the multiplicity that's happening. And in the second term right here, if x is a negative two. So I see I have solutions of one, one, and negative two. And the right way to say that is multiple, I have one, multiplicity of one, and negative two, multi, sorry, the solution of one, multiplicity of two. And negative two is a solution with multiplicity one. Whew. Going a little too quick there for you because I want, didn't want to waste your time. So what does that tell me? Tells me that I have a, a, a solution at one, solution at negative two. What happens on the, the solution at negative two? As multiplicity, an odd number, in this case one, means it has to cross. So I know it crosses there. The other solution at one, what do we know? It doesn't cross, but I know my end behavior is this way, so I know that I have to have a little bit of a bowl that faces down. No other way to fit that in there. It can't touch from coming above because my end behavior is decreasing. So that's what I know for sure. Next step, let's look for its y-intercepts. Where is f of, or evaluate the function at zero. And so, negative two times negative one squared times two equals negative two times one times a two equals a negative four. So I have a y-intercept here down at negative four. And now I know the connecting point here connects to there. And from here, I know that it has to come back on up and connect to that point. Um, I'm going to get back to that thought here in a second. Symmetry. Well, there's no symmetry here. You can tell that it's not reflective about the origin or the y-axis, so I'm not going to test for that in this particular case. And then lastly, turning points. My highest degree that we found out earlier is x cubed. So n would equal 3. My number of turning points would be n minus 1. So I have two turning points. And I can see that reflected in the graph. There's one right here. And I have another one. Now that's the point that I wanted to get back to. I know the graph turns because it's decreasing here and from this direction it's decreasing. So at some point, somewhere around here, my graph turns and, and, return, and connects but I don't know exactly where that is at. 
And so we can do some test points if we want, um, some very small test points back and forth. But for now, our purpose is I just want you to be aware of that. Note that the graph turns around. And so it will connect. And let me connect it with blue. So at some point, it will do that. I might need to change the scale of my graph because maybe it's more spread out than I originally found out. Uh, those are some things that we can do. But for all our intents and purposes, we identified all the things about this graph that we need and can identify. First of all, we looked at its leading coefficient, and that told us it's in behavior. The second thing that we found out is where does it cross the x-intercepts at? One there and one there, and that was my step twos. Step three, found out where it crosses the y-intercept at. Step four was symmetry. We didn't look at that. And then step five, where it's turning points. And then I have another turning point here and some other turning point somewhere around there. And so that gives us a very good idea what this function's graph looks like. And from that, we can start getting an idea of what are some particular values, what's happening at different places of the graph. We need to know those things in order to start to solve some of the problems, some of the real world problems we want to solve happens by our ability to identify key parts of some of these graphs. Okay, I showed you a couple examples. You're not going to get it right away. This is going to take practice. So please practice these over and over again until you get a real good sense of what's happening and why is are those what's happening.